Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Gallic Gun Toys. Thank you for joining me in my Dragon Ball Super Broly movie review. Okay, now I've seen the movie five times, uh, the dub. Uh, it didn't come out here in Australia until the 24th. Uh, that was last Thursday. So I saw it uh, once in the morning that day, once again at night. Saw it again on the Saturday and uh, then I saw it again last night. And again this afternoon after work. Uh, the fifth time that I watched it uh, today, I made a point of just taking a lot of notes uh, all throughout to share with you on my opinions and just some highlights uh, throughout the movie. Now I took a lot of notes, so this is going to be a bit of a long video guys. Just a heads up, and we are going to be going pretty heavy into spoilers. So just a warning there for you. Okay, so, love the opening shot of Planet Vegeta, like, straight away, that was a really nice first scene uh, to start on, and I thought that was really cool. Mm. Sorry about that, guys. This is the third time uh, having a go at this, and each time it's run a bit long, so, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit parched. So, I do apologise if I uh, take a drink break from time to time. So seeing King Vegeta in power, and just seeing uh, what a bit of a ruthless king he was, and a bit of a dick he was, that uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed that, because really we haven't got a lot of King Vegeta, and I think what we have got has been probably mainly filler. Uh, so this was, this was really good. Uh, the whole opening was just awesome, with all the ships flying in. All the freeze uh, Ginyu Force and Freezer Men flying in and the ships. Just uh, really, really well done and beautiful animation. So much world building throughout the movie. Uh, I love that. Saiyan class systems from scientists uh, to butchers to pilots, like specialized Saiyans that just pilot ships. Uh, or just scientists, I thought that was really cool and uh, a nice addition to the world and made Planet Vegeta feel a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, King Vegeta's, like, honor guard, his little man, um, I don't know what you'd call him, like, his attendant, uh, that sits by his door and announces when uh, King Cold's arrived, I thought that was a nice little addition since he is royalty, you know, and we are actually seeing like a royal hierarchy of like his men that are at his side all the time. You know, uh, Paragus is a colonel, but he's not, he doesn't seem to be in that inner circle. Uh, like, you know, there's maybe at least probably ten Saiyans uh, in that little group in his throne room. Uh, his little attendant giving Paragus um, the evil eyes while he's blabbering on about his speech about uh, King Vegeta being jealous of Broly's power. Uh, I thought that was a really nice addition. Freezer using the scouter to point out snipers and then blast them all away. Uh, that was a really, really cool scene. And just a really nice sort of reintroduction of scouters and, you know, making them a little bit more useful again and bringing them back into main continuity. You know, because we do see characters wearing them, uh, like we did in Resurrection F, but they're not really relevant. Uh, I feel like this movie, in the past, it made it made the Scouters more relevant uh, for the past, because it gave us the origin of the Scouters, but it also gave us um, relevance in the future uh, with, you know, uh, Freezer's henchmen not being able to uh, detect... Goku and Vegeta's power level, so as soon as the scouter spikes, they're like, they know uh, that it's the, Saiyan, the Earth Saiyans and they know who they're dealing with. Uh, the fact that it won't register Broly's power level, uh, I just thought that makes so much, uh, for so much better storytelling, uh, just because it gives you an idea of, oh, okay, you can read Paragus's power level, uh, but you can't read Goku's, you can't read Vegeta's, you can't read Broly's, they're just off the chart. Mm. Okay, I've just got so many notes guys, so please bear with me. Okay, so the all new original characters, 
uh, Limo and Chile. I thought they were beautifully, beautifully used and really well utilised throughout the film. Uh, though they got a lesser part, uh, Kikino and Berry Blue I thought were really, really good additions, especially Berry Blue. I really liked uh, just her as an addition, and I hope we do see her in the future uh, of Dragon Ball Super or whatever the next incarnation uh, is called. Uh, the new Broly and Paragus I thought was really good, a really nice change from the originals and just a lot more three-dimensional to uh, what we got from them in uh, movie 8, uh, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan. Definitely, definitely a great improvement and I think it it's really wise for them to bring characters like Broly back into main continuity and just rewriting their uh, backstories and their characters a bit because this really, really worked uh, for both these characters and I guess Gogeta uh, to an extent you can say since this is the first time we've seen Gogeta uh, other than in Fusion Reborn which isn't part of the main continuity okay um King Vegeta have I mentioned that sorry him having an honor guard okay Beats was a cool character and a nice addition to the story uh, he was the Saiyan that um accompanied Paragus to Vampa. Uh, the whole Vampa part from when they land to when Paragus kills Beats, I thought that was all just fantastic and a really, really cool part of the story and some of my favourite parts. Uh, the animation throughout the movie was absolutely amazing. There were a couple of spots um, that seemed off, but it was near the end after the ice had disappeared, so I can only assume that's why it looked off at times. But nothing worth crying about. I thought it's the best Dragon Ball has looked ever, uh, in my opinion. For those scenes that don't look that sharp and some people are complaining about online, um, have, a, have a good look at the animation style that they've picked and the parts that you like and then go back and sort of look at them and just take into account uh, the style of animation they're going with and maybe you'll be a little bit disappointed uh, for those parts you you don't think are the greatest of quality uh, because the quality is there and what you've got to understand is when they change an animation style like they did with this some things are going to seem a little bit off and especially um, after all the lava starts showing up during Goku and Broly's fight. It really changed, the animation really changes, but I've seen other anime movies where as soon as something like that happens or, you know, uh, there's a lot of lava and fire and stuff, the animation does sort of change to look a bit like that. Uh, the only parts of the animation that I thought were slightly off and even then, I think you've got to really be nitpicking to have a problem with it. Is the animation is certain parts of the animation when they're with Piccolo? Um, some of it's not as clean as it could be. Like maybe the uh, work on maybe Vegeta's face in like half of a second of a scene, and maybe like some muscles on Goku. But like I said, it's nothing worth complaining about, and it might look a little bit more drastic to you uh, because of the animation change okay but just remember it's nothing compared to what we had with uh, if you were watching Dragon Ball Super in the very very early days uh, like the first six episodes there are a couple episodes there that uh, had some pretty bad animation that people were up in arms at for a while uh, and it's nothing Nothing anywhere close to that, and I don't think it's worth worrying about or complaining about. And the animation looks beautiful. And like I said, this is the best Dragon Ball has ever looked. And I really hope they keep with this art style. The only part of the actual animation I didn't enjoy was maybe in like one part, one or two... I think it's at least two parts, maybe a few more.
but they do this thing in a couple scenes where it's sort of the camera sort of it's like the camera's focusing in and then focusing out uh, or just having trouble focusing and it's just a bit jarring in an anime when there's no camera to focus. Uh, I don't know what the effect they're going for there is. If you're a little bit more familiar with uh, film and animation techniques, maybe drop a comment down below and uh, let me know, because that's something I'm quite curious about. I just found it a little bit jarring. Uh, music was great all around. Loved it. I thought the soundtrack completely nailed it, and it was really cool, really high energy. And just really got you into all the scenes. Um, Bardock actually figuring out what Freeze is up to instead of, you know, uh, getting psychic powers from another from some alien. That was a really nice addition, and it really helped flesh out the Bardock character a lot more. Like you, I feel you get more from the character of Bardock just. Uh, from him waking up in the ship, uh, when, when he gets woken by the other Saiyan, to when uh, they send Kakarot off, or Go young Goku off. Uh, I feel we get more uh, character building and character depth from just that, uh, from that little bit we get of Bardock, than we got from everything we've seen of Bardock uh, in Z. Okay, uh, the use of, and this is a cool little change, the use of the mini Freezer Force ships uh, for the Saiyans, you know, just using those as their ships. I thought that was really cool. Uh, they do still use their space pods, but their space pods are for infants to send them off. You know, their little one-man capsules. Uh, and I thought that was a really, really nice addition. Really cool. I uh, really enjoyed seeing young Raditz and Vegeta. And the whole conversation they're having with the other Saiyans about their little brothers. Uh, just some really nice world building. Uh, I would love to know what happens to those other two Saiyans that are with Nappa and Raditz and Vegeta. Uh, okay. So it was really good to finally see Gine in animated form. Uh, that's something I've been looking forward to for a while. And it's good to finally actually... Because uh, for a lot of... Uh, people, unless you're really heavy into Dragon Ball and you're really mainstream, you probably didn't know who Gine was. Uh, if you le read a lot of manga, uh, you spend a lot of time on YouTube, uh, maybe uh, finding out uh, or watching uh, channels like Geekdom 101, you're probably aware of who Gine is. Uh, or if you, maybe if you play um, some of the video games, I know... Uh, Dragon Ball Fusions on the DS. I, I know she was a character that you can add to your party in that game. Uh, okay. Okay. The only thing I didn't like about all of that opening, uh, the flashback bits, was the fact that Bardock's the only one fighting that blast back while everyone's clearly watching the impending doom, but Bardock's the only one that actually seems to be uh, fighting back. Uh, so Vegeta being Vegeta the Fourth, I thought that was really cool, uh, really nice addition to more world building, and maybe we'll get some more world building <clears throat> in the future for Vegeta the First and Vegeta the Second, since we know Vegeta the Third is Vegeta's father. Uh, the Scouter counting down while Freezer destroys Planet Vegeta, absolutely amazing use of the Scouters, amazing use of just Freezer, that entire scene, uh, to me, of just him watching it, is just gold, uh, absolute gold and pure Freezer, and Freezer at his best. Okay, now on to the opening after the end of the uh, flashbacks. So the opening of Vegeta and Goku battling uh, through like the opening years and all that, that was cool, and then just them sparring, uh, continuing after that. Beerus telling them off, I thought that was all um, just just some really, really great stuff. All the conversation about them, why they're building their strength. Uh, the fact that Vegeta um, really wants to, 
increase his strength to fight Freezer. He's uh, not so much worried about keeping up with Goku now, uh, especially after the Tournament of Power, I'm guessing, because he's proved he, in his own right, is a mighty warrior that can fight against Jiren and Toppo and, you know, these incredibly, uh, incredibly strong people. Hmm. Okay. We didn't get much of Beerus, but what we did get was pure gold, and I loved it. Uh, I like that Vegeta and Goku have grown to become friends over Dragon Ball Super, and work as a team now. Great change to the dynamic of their relationship. Vegeta having a drive to keep Earth safe from Freezer as well. That's That shows a uh, great, great character development, because uh, he's grown so much throughout Super. It, it's been great, and he continues to grow, and I love that for him. Um, the whole low-power Freezer Force dudes being sent in to steal the Dragon Balls, that is just such a cool little part of the story. Them fumbling around Bulma's lab, them fumbling around in the uh, Antarctic, that was just just really cool, really nicely done. And, yeah, just just cool. Okay, Freezer and Bulma's wishes. Now, I don't think you can get more conceited than those two. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that was just a really nice... Uh, you've got two characters that are on the opposite sides of uh, the spectrum there, but they both want something just as ridiculous as each other, and I loved it, and I thought it was a really nice... Uh, little drive for the plot for Freezer and Bulma. Uh, Berry Blue speaking her mind against Freezer, and Freezer actually not killing her. So obviously, uh, she's someone that uh, he values having at his side, and that's something we haven't really seen from Freezer before. So that shows a little bit more character development there as well from him. And I think uh, Freezer was just one of the best written characters in this movie. Uh, I've seen it so many times now, I kind of... I kind of forget. But he is just so well written, and he has developed so much as a character to just... You know, he's calculating, he's smarter, like, he knows how to play the game now against the Saiyans. He's not afraid to be like, alright, we're gonna pack it up, we're gonna go. We're gonna get out of here. Um, and in Resurrection F, he hadn't learnt that, so, you know, we've seen character development from him just across two movies. Uh, okay. Limo and Chili finding Broly and Paragus, uh, all of that was amazing, just amazing. All the reactions, all the dialogue, um, them flying back in the ship, eating the rations and stuff, that was all great. Uh, the bugs on Vampa was really cool. I really enjoyed that, especially when Limo and Chile arrive, and that big bug comes out of nowhere, and it just, it just looks so menacing. And Broly just comes out of nowhere and just crushes it. I thought that was fantastic. Freezer meeting Broly and Paragus for the first time, that was great. Uh, Fr Freezer making the comment about you brought danger onto my ship, uh, and narrowing his eyes at Paragus. I thought that was really good. <clears throat> and then the whole follow-up of Paragus saying, no, if that happens, I have this controller, I can rein him in. And just the look on Limo, uh, Chile looks shocked as well, but you look on, look at the face on Limo next time you see it, and he is, uh, he looks horrified for Broly, while Broly's, uh, pulling at his shock collar. Uh, when we get to the next scene with uh, Limo, Chili, Paragus, and Broly, like, uh, Chile telling Paragus off, like, all of their scenes of dialogue I thought were fantastic, her stealing the remote. Uh, the encounter everyone has with the drunk guy hitting on Chile, I thought that was really good and a really great scene to add. Like, there's so many little scenes here that just make this movie so fantastic. And I'm, I'm just glad they really took the time to just flesh some of these characters out a little bit more. Uh, okay. The Broly and Bar backstory, I really like that. Makes, uh, like I said, makes Broly look a lot more 
more of a three-dimensional character than his previous incarnation. Okay, the rundown barracks in the freezer ship when they're sitting there eating with Broly, I thought that was really cool. Uh, Freezer clearing the sky as they get to Earth and Goku making the uh, the comment that he always likes a big entrance. I thought that was really nice. Uh, just just some really great dialogue throughout the movie. Really, really good. Mm. Alright, sorry guys. Okay. Uh, everyone departing the ship, uh, like Vegeta, uh, sorry, uh, Broly, Freezer, Paragus, and all of uh, Freezer's men in like their cold gear. I thought that was really cool. A really nice scene. And a really nice entrance for Freezer. Um, so, the Broly-Vegeta fight, I loved every minute of it. I thought it was fantastic. Vegeta grabbing at, uh, like, when they've got their hands locked, and Vegeta, like, crushing his hands as he's got the Super Saiyan glow going about him was just fantastic. Vegeta's transformations were amazing. Like, all the transformations were great in this movie, but Vegeta's Super Saiyan was friggin' the best Super Saiyan transformation I think I've ever seen. And then the Super Saiyan God transformation was pretty solid as well. And, oh my god, Super Saiyan God Vegeta. Uh, we gotta talk about that. Wow. We finally got to see that, and it looked amazing. I'm so glad they finally put that into animation form, because that's some of my favourite parts of the Dragon Ball Super manga, is when he goes Super Saiyan God against... Uh, Goku Black, and just gives him an ass kicking, but he's using, I think in the monk, yeah, in the manga he's using Super Saiyan Blue as well, and then just as he attacks, he uh, changes to Super Saiyan Blue. So he wasn't doing that, but he was using the God form, and that was that was just amazing. Uh, okay, uh, Freezer saying to Paragus, you know, is he done? All right, come on, let's call it a day. That, that was really cool, and like I said, shows a lot more character development for Freezer. The Broly first person um, during the Goku Broly battle. Wow. I didn't know I wanted that until I saw it. I was like, wow, that is something different and something really amazing. Uh, but I think maybe we might have seen it at some point during Dragon Ball Super. Now, now that I'm actually uh, thinking about it. So Goku vs Broly was amazing. Uh, the smackdown that Broly gives Goku was phenomenal. Sean Shamel should be commended because that screaming he does uh, in this movie is just off off the wall. Uh, his Wow, he really brought it for that screaming, and you just, you feel Goku's pain when you're watching that scene. Um, I feel like that scene, the whole fight with uh, Goku vs Broly, the, the first part, was really solid, but after he goes Super Saiyan Blue, the animation, it just, the colours just pop, the animation looks fan just phenomenal, it's, it's just next level, uh, 